Good afternoon to each and every one of you, and praise God we're able to come back once more. And I tell you what, it's a it's a little chilly outside right now. It's a <laughs> not to mention you can see a rooster go by in a pop bottle. It's the wind's blowing so hard. So, but praise God, He is still on the throne, and He is still showing us that the seasons are changing, that His hand is still in control. So, before we get into it tonight, let's. Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's just continue to to uh, pray for our church family, all the ones that are mentioned in our, our prayer chain, and uh, all over the land, the, the sick and afflicted, and definitely the lost and undone, and our, our ministers, our, our, our pastors, uh, all of them all across the land, our pastor, praise God uh, for him, he is, he feeds the sheep. I come home always with a full heart, and that is full of manna that I have needed for the rest of this week to be able to get through. So, praise God for it. And let's uh, let's just continue to lift him and Sister Mary Jane up. And um, I'm not calling any names, but let's uh, let's continue to lift up Sister Florence. It's uh, as close as uh, Mom and I am. I can only imagine. Um, let's just continue to to pray. God is going to do the work. I believe it. I truly believe it. He's going to make a way for his children. So, And uh, let us continue to uh, to just pray for our country. You know, Let us pray before we go do any of this stuff that's out there today. Before you check yes or no on any person. And uh, let's pray before we, we make that checkbox when you go out there and do your voting or whatever it may be. Let us be led by God. So let us pray for our country. Let us pray for this world that we're living in and, and our lost and undone that they would come to know Jesus Christ. So let, before we uh, go into it, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious and holy righteous name, God. Once more, God, for your grace and your mercy, God. How you've blessed us all, God, to get through, Lord God. Father, to get to just a, another week, Father, that we're coming to the midpoint of it, God, Father. Lord God, you've blessed us, Lord God, and you've touched us, Lord God, to get up one morning and one more morning, God, Father, that we would give ourselves, God, unto you, Father. It is a re reasonable service, God, that, that your word, God, talks and asks us, God, to be able to do. Lord God, I pray God, in each and every way, Father, touch our land. Touch the people, that, God, that are in it. Lord God, the sick and afflicted, and Lord, help those lost and undone. Father, stir them, Father, that the Holy Ghost would just stir them, God, and bring them, God, and do, and do what is needed, Father, that they come unto you before it's too late. God, Father, I praise you, Father, for you showing us things, God, in your word. Lord, I thank you, Father, for the things, Lord God, that you brought, Father, to us, God, by the preacher. Father, the teachers and all the ministers that, that we have listened to and heard, Father, that is lining up, Lord. Father, that is rooted, God, in your Holy Ghost, Father, and that is touched and anointed by you, Father, to tell us, Lord God, and help us, God, along these old life, God. Father, as we go down these train tracks, Father, I pray, God, in each and every way, God, we do not veer off of your path. Lord God, that the rails are straight and narrow, Father, and the way, God, is of you. And I pray, God, in each and every way, Father, that we stay on that way. And Lord God, help us, God, in each and every way, Father. Lord God, that we pray, God, unto you. We seek your advice. We seek you, Father. Lord God, not just as advice, Father, but Lord God, as it is the true gospel, Father, that we do, Father, as you would have us to, and that you tell us to, Father, that we would be obedient of men and women, God, unto you. Lord, touch us, God, tonight, Father. Touch the ministers across the land. Touch Pastor, Sister Mary Jane, and Lord God, touch his precious mother, Lord. Touch Sister Florence, God, and anoint her, God, in the almighty way, Father. Lift her up, God. Touch her, Father. Comfort her and anoint her in ways, Father, that we have never seen before, God. But, Father, let her come back with an almighty testimony, God, for you. Lord God, that we praise you and thank you, God, that much more. Lord God, and let us continue to sing praises and and. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Lord, touch our touch our family members, God. Bring them, God, unto you, Father, if they do not know you, Father, in each and every way. Lord, guide us and direct us, God, tonight. God, remove me out beside the way, Father, and let your will be done. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Praise God. I, I contemplated one whether I was going to say this or not, but I mean this in all 
utmost respect. Sunday was a great service. I praise God for seeing those young people up there uh, uh, singing. And I praise God for the testimonies. But I tell you what, I miss hearing my pastor. I miss hearing and getting filled and knowing that I've got that manna for the rest of that week. Praise God, we have got a man of God behind that pulpit. And, you know, it was pastor appreciation. And it still is to, it still should be to all of us to appreciate our members and to appreciate what God has given us. So thank God for it because I tell you what, it will run you over. Thank God for a man of God that will preach exactly what God has given him. So um, tonight we're going to be in Exodus chapter 14. And we'll be in verse uh, 13. This is one of the things that I, I thought I had, I thought I knew, I've studied for, this has been on my heart and on my mind for a week, I guess. But praise God, He's making and moving in so many ways. Before we start, you know, all the last messages were about stand up, stand up. And stand for God. Because we need it today. And we still do. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. But when you stand. We've got to have a foundation. We've got to have that foundation. And we've got to know that what we're standing for. We've got to have the faith. That what we actually are standing for. Is not going to buckle underneath us. And that somebody has got our backs. That somebody's God. That somebody's Jesus Christ on that cross. So let's get into it tonight before I get through the whole thing and not even read a whole verse. So in verse 13 it says, and this is Exodus chapter 14, and it's verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Now, we're in chapter 14. This whole thing started for uh, Moses, to, for them to get uh, the Israelites or God's children out from Pharaoh. We're talking, it was back in chapter, the end of chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5 is when it started. And we're here on chapter 14. And I want you to think about this in a time stance of where we're at today. And I believe we can learn from these things. That's why you do not want to discard the, the back of that book. Praise God, it will be fulfilled again. Because God's going to come get his children. Jesus will be on the east and he will come get his children. I can't tell you what time, I can't tell you what day, nor would I ever want to try to put a date on it. But he's going to come get his children. And this is what we are standing for. We are standing for God. And we're standing that Jesus Christ, what he has done for us, by his grace and by his mercy. Let's continue on here. In verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord uh, said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they may that they go forward. But lit, but lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground, through the midst of the sea. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all of his host and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. God's going to have his number. God's going to have his honor. He tells us even further on in the back of the book if he's got to raise up rocks, he will. That's why, that's why you hear and you've heard that we need to stand up. We need to be for God. You don't want to be the the one that 
we're all right there and you have that choice to stand up. You have the, the choice to be able to give God everything. And I didn't know I had all this to say. I'm going to be honest with you. This is not ex this ain't anything in between. But I feel like God is moving. God is telling me these things. We need to give it all back to Him. We need to stand for Him and give Him the honor. Because just as that, it said right there in verse 17. We don't want to have these hardened hearts. You're seeing enough of them today. You're seeing all of these hardened hearts and all of these things that are coming against God's children and are trying and trying and trying to push these things further and further out. They're trying to get God out of these things. They're trying to just remove anything that has anything to do with Christ from absolutely everything. And they're trying to put in their agenda to do things. The devilish things of this world. But I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you that when we keep on continue reading, it is fulfilled in revelation, just as it says. But God's going to come get his children, just like he done right here. Let's read verse 17 again and continue on. And I behold, and I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, moved, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one, the one came not near the other all night. Church, children of God, and even if you are not a child of God yet, Jesus Christ died for you. He gave every bit on Calvary. He stretched out his arms and shed his blood that you may have the remission of sins that you need to be able to get salvation and to live forever as we pass on into paradise after this life. It tells us that we pass on from, uh, from death to life. But so often we skip just as I've done right here. So often we skip through, notice, and we ain't, we're not done yet, but notice that I did not read you chapters 4 up until, seven, or up until 14 right now. Notice I didn't read it, I didn't read one to you. I didn't tell you what went on before then. We skip right to, and we want these things to happen right now. We see that God is so mighty and we see He is so great because we the only thing that we remember is what He done for us and how He done that one thing. We don't remember what got us to that one thing. We don't remember that we had to have the faith to drive us in that direction. We forget that God is saying, Come unto me, seek me. And we forget that when He puts us up on the mountaintop that we come from the valley to get there. And we forget that we still serve Him and we need to get up on our knees and we need to talk to Him. So what does He do? He brings us even closer. He puts us back down in the valley and says, Talk to me, child. I want to hear of your voice. And I want to know that you're still standing on solid ground because I'm the solid ground and the foundation that Jesus Christ, He gave us to stand on that solid ground and that foundation. We skip those things. And we get and we say, Lord, I want it done now. Well, like somebody that's patting their foot, as Pastor says, at the microwave, because I do it. I've skipped even before tonight. We skip those things and we think we... We just let's go. I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this world. I want to I want to go on. I, I'm ready for Jesus to come get us now. When he's saying son or daughter, 
I've still got something for you. I've got a plan. Can you let me just call upon me and let me have this? Let me take this and let me show you just what I will do for you. Now in previous chapters you'll hear and you'll see that Pharaoh mocked them really well. He absolutely done everything against it and tried his best to make sure that they didn't serve God. And how you see that today. You see those things that are coming to pass. You see those things that are coming against the church. You see the things that that they hate Christ. They hate, they, I mean, the hatred that's in these people's hearts. It is honest to goodness. They'd rather shoot you than look at you anymore. But God is still in the way of these things. He has still got his hand. He's still on the throne. Because he's, he's done so many things for you. Think on these things that he has done for you. But know that you've had to walk through a little mucky mud to get there. It wasn't a smooth road. Because I've had to I've had to remind myself of that here lately. And I'm honest with you tonight because I didn't know I was teaching this. I didn't. Because God loves you. God loves every bit of you. So he wants you to know the truth. And the love means that he is truthful God. Now. Let's get back on into this. And uh, verse 20 here. Not not even <laughs> to actually get back what we're into here. The cloud. You know, God made a cloud to go in between them. So they, one had light. The Israelite, the Israel had a light to see by and know where to go. And how to find that old body of water. And he made a darkness on the Egyptians, so they didn't, they couldn't. The Pharaoh and all of them, they couldn't see. They didn't, they didn't know where to go, and they didn't know which way or what direction. That's my God. That's your God that you serve. If you serve Jesus Christ, that is your God. Why? Why would you not want to stand for these things? Why would you not want to stand for one that will go to this amount of places to get you into his kingdom? In chapter 20, And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud of darkness to them, but gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all night. And praise God, and then it happened. You made it. You got all the way down to verse 21 and you finally made it. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. And all night, and all that night, and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the, on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, and even Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watched the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire, and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off the chariot wheels and drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee. From the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Praise God. He he will be exalted. He will be known. Just as God tells us in his word in Revelations. There'll be a trumpet sound. All the dead in Christ shall rise first, and all that is robbed and remain will come up to meet him in the air. 
Church, before we get there, before we make an end of this, know God wants you to be there every second. He wants you to meet Him in the air. And He wants you to realize these things. He wants you to see that He is the Almighty God. He want, He is showing. He is opening eyes. And He's breaking hearts of stone as we speak. Let us pray these things. Let us pray that God is going to have His way. That He will keep us safe. That He will do these things just as He done to Israel. And that is God's people. As God's chosen one. And guess what? We are grafted in. We are covered by his blood. If you believe in Jesus Christ. You gave it all in Jesus Christ. And you're not just right here. That it's right here in your heart. A possession with a profession. You're a child of God. He's going to do this just for us too. I love each and every one of you tonight. I feel like God is... Cutting it off. We got, we have a whole lot more to talk about. But praise God. God is good. But I want you to remember that we all had to walk through the valley to get to those mountaintops. So let us not be those, just as children of Israel was back in the previous chapters. They, they, Shoot, just right here in um, in chapter 14, he looked unto Moses and said, You brought us all the way here, all the way down here, that you know there's no graves. There's no graves for us. And that we're going to die right here. <laughs> Let us trust God. Let us trust exactly what he's got for us. And know where we stand and why we stand up for him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Lord God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord God, where you brought me through. Lord God, when I found myself at the bottom of the barrel, Lord. Father, Lord God, when I found the splinters, Lord God, it felt like it was in me. But Father, I knew, Lord God, that Jesus took it all. That he bare it all, Father. And Lord God, what he's done to him, Father, I know, God, that I will serve a persecution on this earth but father i praise your precious name god knowing god that you're the almighty lord and knowing father lord god that just as i'm in the valley lord god that you can lift us up on the mountaintops lord i praise you god for the days god that you've blessed me lord god that you've drug me out of these places lord father lord god i praise you god for blessing us lord god as a church lord father that that the word is going forth and going out and lord god i pray god in each and every way god that we do not give up on our loved ones Lord Father that we know Father that there may be a dry season Lord but Father Lord God that we don't serve just by feeling God and knowing and thinking and all of this stuff but we serve by faith God in you that we have a faith Lord God in Jesus Christ and we serve and stand on these things God knowing Lord God that you are the almighty help us God in each and every way God tonight Father today Lord God whenever if you are listening to this of your people Lord touch them and help them Father Lord God that we would be thankful where you've brought us from and where you're taking us to Father and Lord that day that the east shall split and we hear that trumpet for the last time God that we'd praise you while we have the breath on this earth and that we would serve you in these last days, Father, that we would see souls saved. God, that the great revival, Lord God, would stir this land. Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We ask these things, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Love each and every one of you. Pray you have a blessed rest of the week.